guys. I am so excited to show you how I made this boho farmhouse shiplap wall. It's about five feet tall with this fun pine shelf, which originally was not going to look like this, but I think this simple streamlined version looks so much better and it coordinates really nicely with the cane headboard that I made. Um, so anyways, I am really excited to show you the challenges um, that I came across along the way and what I did to overcome them so that if you want to tackle this project, you can just like skip past all of my issues. So thanks for watching. So the first step in removing the baseboards is to go ahead and cut along um, between the, the trim and the wall. You're cutting the caulking and the paint. And then I used a putty knife to carefully separate it. Just make sure you don't damage your walls um, or the trim piece. Now the next step is to deal with the trim on each side. And I don't have a very steady hand, so my husband Jeremy went ahead and used this multi-tool to cut a 90 degree angle. That way the shiplap can just slide right in. Next step is to locate and mark the studs on the wall, and then we're gonna measure the width of the wall. So when you have the width, then you can uh, trim off a small piece of one end of the shiplap and make a cut and then measure, mark, and cut the other end. Oftentimes shiplap is um, a little bit messed up at, at the store, so you wanna trim your ends. Go ahead and trim it and then place two brad nails in each stud once you have it in place. And you see I didn't use a laser level or level of any kind. You're gonna wanna do that so that each board is straight. So next is marking out um, the spot for the outlet. So the first board just hit the top there. That was pretty easy to do. Um, but you're gonna wanna cut the power before you unscrew all this and add your gang box extender. That's gonna make it so your outlet is flush with the shiplap. Since you're popping out your wall half an inch, you wanna pop out your outlet half an inch. Then you're gonna go ahead and use a piece of shiplap trim like I'm doing right here. And this will help you to mark your spot. And then you just line it up to your piece of shiplap. Make sure it's level. And then you mark it directly onto the board, which is so nice. It makes it so much easier than to do a million measurements. I don't know about you, but I am not that great at math. And so using this little piece made it so much easier. So marked it, measured it just to make sure, drew my lines, and then I was ready to go make the cuts. I used the multi-tool again, which is, it's a really loud and it's not very steady, but I felt like I could go ahead and cut out the outlet shape and it was a little bit smoky, um, but it worked. I, I was able to cut it out pretty good. It didn't have to be perfect, but it was very close. And I just slid the board in place and it fit perfectly. And so once it's in there, you're going to want to go ahead and tighten the screws a bit. Um, because that's, you want it sturdy in there when everything is said and done. So go ahead and continue adding your shiplap boards and putting your brad nails, two brad nails into each stud along the way, making sure it's level before you add those nails. You'll wanna make sure to measure um, the wall before you cut each board. I did not cut all my boards at once. I followed my husband's advice and measured it. Even though our house is new, the walls can be uneven. So make sure you measure each piece and then use your um, level to get each piece level before you secure it into the studs. And um, he also taught me, again, make sure you're trimming off both ends of each board um, just to make sure they're nice, fresh, um, clean cuts at each end. Hey guys, so I thought I was all done with the shiplap wall, but I realized there's no way I could put the plant shelf wood directly on top of that. This big gap would look silly and it just, it wasn't what I envisioned. So um, after some brainstorming, I just decided I'm gonna add one more piece of shiplap. That will give Sawyer's headboard a little more space too. So it's a win-win. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim this top piece off and that will allow me to put the one by two 
directly on top of the shiplap. It will be seamless. Um, it'll be much better. So let's go out to the garage and cut it down. I went ahead and used a circular saw to trim off the shiplap gap along the top. This will be my final piece of shiplap that goes along the top. Add wood putty to the nail holes and once it's dry, I waited a day, um, go ahead and gently sand it off using 120 grit sandpaper. I also um, used a vacuum and a microfiber washcloth. Then you want to go ahead and cut your 1x2 pine boards and um, I just used some painter's tape to secure it and that's when I marked my studs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill the stud holes um, and my shelf will cover up those holes perfectly so it will be seamless and so I'm making sure that they're a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Now I'm using my Craig pocket drill tool and I'm marking the spots. This is where I'm going to drill holes into the shelf and this is where it will attach into the one by two in the wall. And the, the Craig pocket dr drill set, it has these amazing instructions. It's kind of like a chart. So when you measure the thickness of your wood, mine was three quarters of an inch, you set everything to three quarters of an inch. And then you just mark your spots. And I made sure to drill my pocket holes where the stud hole um, wasn't at. So I want to make sure you clear those. And I just use a clamp to secure my jig on there and then I use the three-quarter set drill bit. Now you want to go ahead and add those screws to secure your one by two to the wall. And then once that's ready, you can go ahead and use those awesome pocket holes to attach the shelf. Now caulking the sides, this is the first time I ever caulked. Um, you want to go ahead and use warm water to smooth it. I also use toothpicks to smooth out um, the caulking in my shiplap gaps. That's just what I chose to do. Now the caulking dries pretty quick. So then I went ahead and applied my second coat of Magnolia Home Paint Clean Lines. And I also was able to paint the outlet cover. I just used some tape to stick it on there so I wouldn't be touching the ends. And it actually only took one coat um, there was one spot I needed to touch up later, but that was no problem. So now my outlet matches the wall and it blends seamlessly. So go ahead and pick up some Magnolia Home Paint. I used clean lines for this wall design. It went on like butter and it just turned out so cute. Um, my teen daughter loves her boho bedroom and the shiplap wall turned out pretty great.